world's number one small business guru and the author of the book, e -Myth. Michael Gerber talks about that most entrepreneurs, they are not actually entrepreneurs. They are technicians with an entrepreneurial seizure. Meaning suddenly they are working a job, they're doing something, and then the entrepreneurial bug just bite them and they're like, you know what? I can do better than this, that I should go out there and start my own business. And what happens is then you have a plumber starting a plumbing business or a chef starting a restaurant business. So they understand the technical aspect of a business, how to do the technical work, but they actually don't have the necessary skills of a business owner of an entrepreneur on how to actually run a business. So then what ends up happening is they get busy and busy, busy, busy and doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. And they never understand how to build a business. What Michael talks about that most entrepreneurs, they spend way too much time working in the business, but not on their business. In fact, recently I've had the honor of having Mr. Michael Gerber and his CEO, his wife, coming to my training, mentor, learning from mentor, and Michael has not attended anyone's training for 30 plus years. And Michael's work has had such a profound impact in my business career that I am happy that I'm able to share a couple key insights with him that has helped him as well. So here's what he has to say. It has been totally amazing. My husband never sits and listen to speakers because he's the big mouth, he's the speaker. And I am so proud of you, Michael, to sit here and listen to Dan. It's totally amazing. One thing he said at the very outset of today was about the personal brand. And it struck me so hard because I've been speaking for 50 years about the impersonal brand. Dan to know, and I want you all to know, that from this point forward, it will be me sharing my name, my message, my meaning to everybody worldwide in ways that are just absolutely astonishing. In order to build a business that runs without you, day one, your intention must be building a business to sell. Even though you may never sell the business, but day one, you need to plan, you need to structure your business in such a way that, hey, if I'm gonna sell it someday, what would that look like, right? What do I need to do differently? Well, one thing for sure that you know, you cannot just be the one that's doing it, doing it, doing it. That's just driving the business. Yes, in the beginning, you have to be the driver for the business, same as me. But later on, what does that actually look like? What does the end product look like? Meaning, what does your business look like when it's done? That's correct. You have to have a picture. What does your business look like when it's completed, when it's finished, when someone could step in and actually take over? Even though you may never sell the business, but what that means is if you could build your business in that way, that automatically makes your business more valuable. So when you do want to retire, when you do want to have a successful exit, cash in. You could do that. Even though you never do that, just by thinking and structuring and building your business in a way that is sellable, it makes the business more scalable. It makes the business more efficient. That gives you more freedom. Freedom to do whatever you want. Maybe you want to use the free time to start another business. Maybe you are a serial entrepreneur just like myself. Or maybe you wanna focus your time on building your investment and taking some of the profits and grow your portfolio. Or maybe you just wanna spend more quality time with your family. But now you have a choice. You're working in the business not because you have to, but because you want to, because you enjoy it but you know that you can also step away if you want to as well. That's what we need to do. You see the nature of business, technology and people and the world that we live in, it means that there's always a degree of unpredictability. That is very, very normal. But most challenges, most problems in business, usually they are not a one-off event. So if you find yourself solving the same problem in a business, again and again and again and again, usually it is a sign of lack of business system in your company. As the CEO of your company, you don't want to confuse what you don't want to do with what you need to do. Yes, I am a visionary like yourself as well. I like a big picture. I get it. But someone, it could be you or someone within your organization, better know how to create systems. 
One of the most powerful mindset shifts that you need to have is instead of asking, what do I need to do? Ask yourself, how do I solve this problem? Not once, but forever. You must realize that business is an intellectual sport, that in order to create a different result, we have to think differently. That means that we have to ask ourselves a different set of questions. So let's talk about exactly what is a system. Regardless of what business you're in, there are best practices, there are best ways of doing something that have the highest chance of bringing about a particular result that you want consistently. So if you look at the best practices and you identify those steps and you break it down into things and ways that could be written down, that could be illustrated, that could be documented, that could produce those results again and again, that is a system, it's that simple. Think of it like baking a cake, right? If you wanna bake a cake, you wanna have the same flavor and same taste all the time, right? There's a recipe that you know exactly what ingredients and how much ingredients and how long you want the cake to be in the oven, right? There are steps into doing this and you could illustrate the whole process in a recipe, in a checklist, or maybe even a, a grocery list of where to get those ingredients in order to create that cake consistently to have that consistent performance and outcome. Well, that is a system. It's that simple. Don't overcomplicate this. And in business, there are many, many, many forms of systems. I don't want to go into too much in depth because that would be a long, long video. I'm just going to give you at the most basic level, three types of systems. First, hot system. Hot system means it's what something looks like visually, what it looks like. Your logo is a hot system, right? If you walk into a store in McDonald's, you see a certain theme, the decoration, that is a hot system. A uniform, that is a hot system. If you are a web designing company, your template, that is your hot system. If you are a digital marketing company and you build funnels for people, that funnel template, that is your hot system. Something that you could replicate and duplicate for other clients. Then number two, you have what I call soft system. Soft systems meaning what something sounds like. Example, it could be how you greet a customer, how you handle complaints, how you sell, how you upsell, how you cross sell, how you communicate with your prospects, your closing script, that is a soft system. Now, every single time if your salesperson gets on the phone and just says whatever he feels like, oh, I'm just, he's just winging it. Well, that is not a system and depends on his mood. Someday he closes well, someday he doesn't close so well. That is because you're not giving him a system to follow. Now, I'm not saying that you have to give him a script to follow word for word and he's talking like a robot, but there should be some standard questions, some standard script that you know, kind of an outline that he's gonna follow every single time he gets on the phone and closes somebody. That's a soft system. That's how you get predictable sales. You don't want, if you have a, a team of 10 salespeople, you don't want all of them closed differently. Yes, they have their own little style, but they should all follow the same soft system. And third, you have information systems. When I say information systems, I'm referring to your standardized processes and reports. So if you have your KPI report, your key performance indicator report, that is a form of soft system. Your training program, that is a form of soft system. For example, within our organization, we have a 30-day onboarding process for Team Danlock. Any new hire that we hire, they go through a 30-day process that immerse them into our culture, our core values, our mission, what we are about, what we are not about, how we do things, so that we don't have to manually train someone all the time. They're gonna go through this process. There are different assignments. There are books that we recommend them to read. And in 30 days, they can then hit the ground running very, very quickly. Then all we need to do is just integrate them with whatever that we are working on and they could get started very, very quickly. Because think about this, people come and go and that's life. But the jobs that people do will remain even though those people are no longer with you. Isn't it a lot easier to find someone to fill that position if you have systems in place, someone could hit the ground running versus what most business owners do, and this is what I used to do, I made that mistake, that when someone leaves, right, their capabilities, their skill sets, all going with them, and now you have a void. Now you need to start from scratch. You hire that person, you spend a lot, a lot of time training that person, 
right? Very, very costly. Versus every single time someone leaves your company, it creates a huge burden. It creates a massive amount of chaos. Then you gotta clean up that mess and you gotta go in every single time to be the hero to save the day. You do not want to do that. Think about this. How most business owners operate, think of it like a car, right? Without systems, what you do is every single time you're gonna hire someone, you're gonna have him or her or you build this car together, right? And you're gonna teach that person how to drive. And finally, after a long period of time, you've got a car and that car is kind of going and the driver's there. But the problem is when they leave without systems, they take the car with them. They take their skills, they take their resources and capabilities all with them. Now guess what? You gotta build another car again. You gotta find that person. You gotta work together. You gotta build a car before you have something running versus think of the car as the system. And if a driver has basic driving skill, you could bring somebody to drive that car. So you lose a driver. Okay, you lose a driver, kind of sucks, but you still have the car, that's the system. You could bring another driver who has some basic driving skill. That person just kind of needs to learn, get familiar. Okay, well, this car is a little bit different from my last car, my last job, but the mechanics are the same, right? Kind of the basics are the same. All I need to do is just kind of get familiar with just the feel of the car. That person can get up to speed so much quicker versus someone takes the car with them every single time you lose someone. That is very, very costly. So the system would run the business and your people would run the system. That's how you build a business that runs without you, a business that scales. And every level is an other devil. What got you to $100,000 a year in revenue won't get you to 1 million. What got you to 1 million won't get you to 10. What got you to 10 won't get you to 30 million and beyond. Because the very team, the very same team that you have at $100,000 won't be the same team at a million, and it won't be the same team at 10 million, and it won't be the same team at 30 million. What you need to focus on as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, at every stage of your business, they're completely different. And that's the challenge most business owners face. They don't know how to shift from an entrepreneur to a CEO. If you want a proven path of exactly what you need to focus on at every stage of your business growth, and also how do you shift from the entrepreneur to the CEO. How do you wear that CEO hat? You could download our Dragon 100 Path with the link below. Man's a force of nature. He's improved, you know, arguably millions of lives uh, where they can provide themselves with more money. His uh, materials are great, excellent. He's at the top of uh, his game. Everything he says has a purpose, and everything he does is done with heart. What I've seen from Seafood and Lock, I didn't see it from anyone else. He's done it, he's been there, and he's still doing it. Because of Dan Lock, my revenue uh, went 30% up. I actually get like a clearer picture of how I should run my, my business. I can feel it that he really, truly do we want to help his students? Started taking hold of more advanced strategies on building our brand, creating content, leveling up our team. In an environment where I could actually be around people that were going to support that, encourage that, and hold me to a higher standard. Dan is a great mentor to get you not only in the right frame of mind, but then to give you the know-how, the tools, the skills to get there. If you will just follow his advice, go step by step according to his blueprint, you will achieve results more than you can imagine about. <laughs>